To understand Leeds, we have to go back in time and understand two things. Firstly, how Leeds led the way in garment manufacturing, and then how this helped to define the modern city centre. This is my dad again. It's at the moment that the majority of people can afford to go shopping that the modern town centre takes off. The very notion of the high street as a shopping centre is an entirely modern one. It involves the mass market and shops like this. Without textiles, there wouldn't be the leads that we know of today. Mel Roberts from Leeds Civic Trust takes up the story. At the, just the beginning of the 1800s, all the stars aligned really for Leeds. We had Michael Marks. More about him in a bit. Montague Burton. And him. And John Barron all living in the city. And they were really skilled businessmen, entrepreneurs through and through. John Barron is an interesting character for Leeds. He started off with a shop on Brigert. You know, you could almost say that fast fashion began here in Leeds with John Barron and his um, use of a bandsaw to make multiple items of clothing at the same time. We had Hepworth as well, of course, which um, went on to become next. So John Barron effectively invents fast fashion through his new ways of manufacturing. Then the next stage is how we sell those mass manufactured clothes. And that starts here at the Burton's factory in Hare Hills, once the largest clothing factory in the whole world. I spent a wonderful half hour talking with local historians, Jackie and Bob Lawrence. We have both been particularly interested in, in Montague Burton's because we both worked there. And that's actually where we met. Bob was on the manufacturing side, and I was on the data processing side, or IT as we call it now. Well, so Bob, tell me about when you started there and what it was like in the factory. All oh, right, well, I started work at Burton's in March uh, 1957. It was massive. You could stand at one end of the cutting room or any of the sewing rooms for that matter, and you could hardly see the other end. Uh, the cutting room, there was about 750 men, mostly men, working in there and all you could hear all day was snip 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 of the shears of the actual cutting shears it was a very family orientated business it was like living a world within a world really um, the reason i say that is because when i left burdens to come out into the real world it was quite a shock to the system because burdens really looked after their employees in, in every single way because they had um a fantastic social side of the business where all employees could take part. They had uh, football, soccer, cricket, athletics, netball, netball, amateur dramatic society, yes. photographic society. It had a, a fantastic canteen called the Princess Royal Canteen, which could hold up to 10,000 people. So, yeah, they, they served 8,000 people in an hour and a half every day. You know, when you were working there, did you have a sense of? being in the biggest clothing factory in the world and being in the hub of a place that had changed the face of clothing across the world. Well, absolutely, I did. The very first week we were there, uh, we were taken into a room and shown a film of all about Burton's, how it started. The unique selling point for Montague Burton's was that uh, they were actually making made-to-measure suits rather than than off the peg, already made to. They were actually making made to measure suits for the same price that the other manufacturers were selling an off the peg suit. So it was the first time that a, an ordinary working man, that he could, he could afford to buy a made to measure suit. And that, that was really what got them off the ground, I think. That was their major selling point. Then of course, the next big innovation where he led the world was that he then started selling clothes he'd made in his own shops. After the Second World War, Burton, was Burton Group was responsible for making one third of the demob suits for the returning servicemen. For, you know, one third for the whole country. And the unique selling point at that point for Burton's was that they had got stock, pre-war stock of different fabrics. So they could offer a better range. And have you ever heard of the term a full monte? Mm -hmm. Well, that's when uh, soldiers coming out of the army could walk into the shop and they'd be given a full monte, which is a, a three-piece suit, that's a jacket, waistcoat and a pair of trousers, plus an extra pair of trousers, 
and then they would be given a shirt and a tie and maybe a packet of underwear as well. So Full Monty is the Full Monty Cuban? Yes. yes. Where are the boys that used to hang around you? I used to see them anywhere I found you. In 1884, Michael Marx, a Polish Jewish immigrant, set up his famous Penny Bazaar in Leeds Market. His son, Simon, who took over the business in 1909, recognized the possibilities of selling quality goods of many kinds and built up a chain of stores, Marx and Spencer, which have had a profound effect on almost all town centers in Great Britain as well as in Leeds itself. But they weren't the only people to change the face of fashion. And of course, the buildings of the city also played a massive role. So, working with the Civic Society and Leeds Museums and Galleries, the project has produced a new online heritage trail. Suzanne Nichols from Zero Waste Leeds sat down with me over Zoom and we had a look. So, Suzanne, I've opened up the heritage trail. Wow, we get a map straight in front of us you can just move your you move your mouse around and dip in and out and um have a look at, at all the amazing um things that exist in in our city and its surroundings i mean there's some there's some amazing stuff in here like i'm just looking at one the medieval blue rinse so you click on it it shows you the old white cloth hall going back quite a long way here to 1715 in this one yeah and i mean that's where it all started so that's you know over 300 years and it's amazing as well because i've just clicked on one that's quite near where i live and then I realised, you know, I kind of knew a bit about it because I walked past it all the time, which is the old tannery at Meanwood. But a lot of people will, will have seen the blue plaque, but might not understand just the significance. Exactly. And that's what we wanted to do. But yeah, a whole load of history all across the city and in the suburbs, in the city itself and further afield as well. And one of the things I didn't know was about the women's clothing strike. And um, it made me quite ashamed, actually. It made me realise we hear a lot about the men uh, involved in the history of our clothing, but not so much about the women. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was back in the 1970s. Again, that was part of developing this textile trail. It's a lot about pride in the city and all these amazing things that kind of get lost. So doing something like this was really important to have it all in one place. 